Carmelo Anthony, while he has consistently put up great numbers, he has just had a series of missteps, just things that have really made him look bad. You know, his friends, LeBron James, says, I'm calling him from across the country saying, dude, what's going on? LeBron is a leader of his team. I don't get the sense that Carmelo is the leader. Talking to players on the gold medal team from Beijing, they said Carmelo Anthony was the leader of that team. I mean, you had Kobe, you had LeBron, you had Dwayne Wade, all of these guys. This past playoffs, Carmelo Anthony was a stud. I mean, he came to the forefront. He's one of those NBA stars, legitimate stars, who you really, most people really don't know a whole lot about. Just making uh, bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. So if anybody needed a makeover, Carmelo Anthony did. I control my own destiny. What are you doing, man? Are you messing up? You still looking for yourself? You still finding yourself? Where's Melo? Sometimes it takes you to go in a room or get away from everybody and just ask yourself what you want to do, who you want to be. Melo's got to break away. They're not going to catch him. No. In many ways, Carmelo Anthony knows who he wants to be. He also knows that he's very much a work in progress. The Denver Nuggets 6'8 small forward is a two-time All-Star and a gold medalist who has averaged 24 points per game in his six-year NBA career and who last season led the Nuggets to the Western Conference Finals for the first time in 24 years. Anthony around James for the stop. I look at him as one of the best players that we have in our league. He's gotten better every single year. Uh, since we were all rookies in 2003. A great scorer, a great talent that wants to become, get to the top of the mountain. Melo regrouped last year, and rather than have to be a dominant player, he was a winning player. And Carmelo hits it! Carmelo hits it! But there's another side to Anthony he doesn't want to be. One known for a very public string of missteps that includes fights, drug charges, and questions about his character. I'm tired of hearing that I'm a knucklehead. Mistakes happen. Everybody make mistakes. I, I know for sure I ain't no knucklehead. I've never been a knucklehead growing up. Anthony grew up on the streets of Baltimore, a city that was then averaging almost a murder a day. His mother raised him alone after his father died of cancer when Anthony was two. It's the same story as any other in the city, you know, drugs and murders and prostitution. You know, I done came home from school and right on the corner, bodies laying there, like, I done seen that. Growing up in an environment like that, my concern was very deep that if there's a shooting or something, he could have got hit, or maybe he would have been introduced to drugs at an early age. Did you ever get involved in any of that other stuff? That, no, the bad stuff? not at all. Because I, I always played sports. I knew most of all of them people, you know, that was out there on the corners, that was doing the stuff that happens every day in the hood. For some reason, they always kept me away from that stuff. Anthony's early career was an athlete's dream. In one year at Syracuse University, he brought the school its first national championship in men's basketball. He was the third pick in the NBA draft in 2003. In his rookie season, Anthony led the Nuggets to their first postseason in nine years. Then, in the summer of 2004, Anthony was selected to the U.S. Olympic team. It was in Athens where he began earning a reputation as a troublemaker. After the team's embarrassing 19-point loss in Game 1 to Puerto Rico, Anthony complained about his lack of playing time. Somebody asked me, you know, what happened in the game, and I said, I don't know. Ask somebody who played. Anthony never got out of Team USA coach Larry Brown's doghouse. The team came home with a bronze medal, and Anthony became a symbol of the disappointment. Just weeks later, after returning from Athens, Anthony was involved in a fight at a New York nightclub with the ex-boyfriend of his future fiance, MTV VJ Lala Vasquez. We was out and about just having a good time, and he spit in her face. Someone spit on me, so Mello reacted quickly without thinking like a lot of people would. You're not going to disrespect nobody that I'm with. 
you disrespecting them and you disrespecting me. Like, you challenging my manhood. Anthony's public perception got even worse in October of 2004, the start of his second NBA season, when security inspectors at the Denver airport found a bag of marijuana in Anthony's backpack. I did not know that it was in there. A couple of my buddies, you know, was using my luggage. So whose was it? It was a friend. It was a, it was a friend. It wasn't yours? No. Anthony's friend later came forward and claimed the drugs were his. Charges against Anthony were dropped. But there was speculation that Anthony asked his friend to take the fall. I come out with a statement saying it wasn't mine. Later on, the guy owns up to his mistakes, but he's still saying Melo told him to take that charge. Like, no, I didn't. If it was mine, I man up to it and say it was mine. In December of that same year, Anthony's reputation took its fourth hit in five months. Anthony appeared in Stop Snitching, an underground DVD circulated in Baltimore to try to intimidate residents to not cooperate with police. It received national attention. In the scene that included Anthony, someone threatened to lynch Larry Brown. I was home, you know, some guys that was in the neighborhood was on the camera talking, and for some reason, they added that to a, a Stop Snitching DVD. There's places he goes sometimes and things he, he does that I'm like, no other basketball player of your magnitude would do something like this, but it's just in his mind he's still that kid from Baltimore that can hang out with anyone and do anything, and you really can't. Honestly, I was lost, like, from going from national championship, number three pick in the draft, now this. So you go from on top to being at the bottom. That was probably the toughest times that I ever, ever had to go through. According to his former agent, concerns about Anthony's image cost him an estimated five to $10 million in endorsement deals. But his biggest sponsor, Nike's Jordan brand, stood by him. In 2005, Michael Jordan himself spent a week with Anthony in Chicago to help him get back on track. What did that mean to you? It meant that I had somebody who's as powerful and as impactful as Michael Jordan to stand up and say, regardless of what happened in the past, I'm standing next to him. From that point, I took it as, I can't let myself down, but I definitely can't let him down. Melo for three left side. Yes! Just after the start of his fourth season, Anthony opened the Carmelo Anthony Youth Development Center in Baltimore. He had donated $1.5 million for the project to help kids stay off the street. He looked like he had turned that corner. Everything was great. People applauded him for what he did in his hometown. And then that fight, man, <laughs> the fight. Two days after the rec center opening on December 16th, 2006, Anthony punched Knicks guard Marty Collins and was suspended for 15 games after the now infamous Knicks Nuggets brawl occurred at Madison Square Garden. And he is gonna miss a lot of games because of that part. So what were you thinking then? Not again. Like, that's all the dad kept saying. Not again. Anthony returned to the court in January of 2007. Two months later, fiance Lala gave birth to his first son, Cayenne, in March. But even that wasn't quite enough to keep Anthony out of trouble. In April of 2008, he was arrested on suspicion of driving under the influence and later pleaded guilty to a lesser charge of driving while ability impaired. The Nuggets suspended him for two games. Believe me, he's been punished in himself ten times over what a police officer could have did, what the public could have did, what the NBA could have did, what he punished himself because he still carries that with him to this day. What were you saying to him? Are you going to learn from your mistakes? You know, and you know, I know a lot of people are on you about you know, some of the judgment that you have, the difference between right and wrong. And uh, Carmelo, you have to understand that you are a professional athlete. And as a professional athlete, you have to carry yourself.